All right. So I just had an awesome massage, right? And I'm here at this fantastic hotel here in beautiful KL. And it just got me thinking because I had this amazing massage and I feel like a million bucks right now. Maybe it's the surroundings as well. You know, they're pretty nice. Uh, but it kind of got me thinking about some of the questions that we often get in our MAC courses, which is, right, we're kind of known for the assessment and a lot of the exercise prescription side of what we do. Uh, and a lot of people kind of say, well, do we still do manual therapy? Oh, Heather's jumped on. G'day, Heather. Heather, how's it going? Um, and, the, and so, you know, it's, it's a really common question. And the answer is always a massive affirmative yes. Um, you know, manual therapy is super important. And I think given a lot of the way in which I think our therapeutic landscape has kind of progressed over in, in recent times, you know, a lot of people are almost kind of scared to almost say that they do do manual therapy and that, and that they do continue to do treatment techniques and they, that they do find them useful. So I've chucked a little poll up here. I want people to jump on board. I want them to, uh, you know, click either yes or no. Uh, it's the first time I've done a poll, so I don't really know how it works, but please have a, have a crack here. Um, but I thought I'd talk about, I guess, why at Matt we still really value manual therapy and where, where it really fits in. Okay. So... Uh, number one, right, when we're treating and looking after patients, I think one of the most important things that we can do with our patients and with our clients is try to establish what their expectations are of the session that we're conducting with them, right? So one of my most important questions, ah, Ray is on, g'day Ray, how's it going? Um, one of our most important questions or one of my most important questions that I'll ask a patient is often what do they expect from the session that we're doing at the moment, right? And in the thousands of patients that I've worked with, uh, you know, over my career and, and, and everything that's gone on, the answers are usually kind of threefold. Oh, Liam's on. G'day, Liam. Um, so the answers are, are usually threefold, right? People, their expectations are they want to feel better, right? They want a plan in place to help them get back to whatever it is that they want to be able to do. And uh, they usually want some type of exercises or, or something like that as well, right? They, like they want something to be able to take control. Usually they are simply the three answers that people will give. Oh, Ives is on. G'day Ives, how's it, how's it going there? Um, so, you know, in that, in that element, right, often the feel better aspect is, is really important for people, right? They have this expectation whether or not it's correct or, or not. You know, a lot of people have previously experienced some type of treatment, they've done something before, uh, or, or they've seen another healthcare practitioner, they kind of have a, a, an inkling of what healthcare involves, right? And usually that does involve some type of hands-on treatment that they expect will help them feel better. And that's super important because that expectation sets the tone for the rest of the session. And almost always, right, by delivering some of that, we're going to help them feel better, which is gonna set us up for success going forward with the session that we're gonna conduct, right? So number one, expectation is a huge aspect when it comes to delivering healthcare and usually manual therapy fulfills some of that expectation. So it's super important in that respect, right? Okay, so number two, right? Manual therapy, when we look at kind of what it does and how it works, uh, we teach this a lot in our MAT course, right? There are lots of different forms of manual therapy, whether that be uh, soft tissue massage, whether that be some type of stretching techniques, whether that be things like uh, dry needling or um, you know, anything else that you can, you can think of, right? Um, now, all of these different forms of therapy, all these different forms of uh, treatment, they kind of have their own, I guess, philosophies as to how they might work. When we go to the research though, I guess, uh, you know, it can be hard to kind of establish, I guess, the effectiveness of how these things actually achieve their result. But usually what we're looking to achieve is the exact same thing, which is essentially we want to reduce sensitivity, we want to reduce their kind of pain, their discomfort, and usually want to increase range of motion, increase mobility, uh, help people move, right? And so when we look at how this might work, 
then uh, realistically, you know, I, I think the only way in which that can work in the acute short term is through some type of neurological modulation. Okay, so regardless of whether or not you think manual therapy breaks up scar tissue, whether or not you think it, uh, you know, kind of alters the structure in any way, look, it's probably not the case. And this is probably where the bad name for manual therapy comes from in the first place, right? Like people claiming that uh, certain techniques are going to totally change the structure of the human form in such a short amount of time with realistically a short amount of force, right? Uh, so. You know, I think if you're claiming these things, this is where it's going to get a bit of a bad name. So as long as we can hang our hat on the fact that manual therapy is designed to change the input to the neurological system to affect a different output, then I think we can all get on board, right? I think that's fine. I don't think there's any issues with that. So that's where then manual therapy can help us, I guess, help people feel better and then potentially help them move a little bit better as well. Because the third thing that manual therapy is then important for is setting us up for success in terms of providing a window of opportunity to then allow us to establish better movement for the people that we work with, okay? So, for example, uh, in our MAT course, we teach this a lot. So we usually start our sessions with some form of manual therapy because it does provide that window of opportunity to then get people actively involved in the treatment process. So whether that be then to uh, help them feel, feel better, reduce their pain, reduce their discomfort, help them move better, so that we can start to work on the strengthening aspect or start to work on improving their movement skill and their movement efficiency, developing their movement variety, developing the different movements that they might be able to perform, right? If someone comes and sees you and they're all jacked up and they're really sore and they're really uncomfortable, they're probably not gonna be very willing participants in that, right? So we need to set them up for success and that's where manual therapy can be super important in that respect, okay? So manual therapy number three, allows us to do that, sets us up uh, so that we have that window of opportunity to allow people to move better. Number four, and I think this is probably one of the underrated aspects and having a bit of a chat with some of the uh, clinicians over the last uh, week or so when we've been conducting these courses here in uh, Malaysia and through Asia, the, the other thing that manual therapy really helps us achieve is it allows us to develop, I guess, that therapeutic alliance in many ways as well, right? Which I think is a totally underrated aspect when it comes to uh, the clinical kind of methodology of, of why we would deliver that. So what I mean by that is when we're working with a patient, when we're working with a client, we need trust, we need rapport, right? That's the only thing that's going to provide us, I guess, with the longevity of being able to look after that person and actually help them achieve an amazing result, which is the reason why we're all here in the first place. So by conducting manual therapy, what we're doing is usually meeting people's expectations, right? There's an element of kind of getting to know someone when we're usually doing some form of hands-on technique, right? Like you kind of have to get close to them, you have to kind of talk to them, you have to kind of get to know them. And that is a part of the trust building process, right? And it's super, super important. The other thing that that allows us to do, I guess, is, you know, there's no one who comes in and sees any of us who expects us to basically help them achieve their goals in one session, right? I think people are fairly well educated, they're fairly realistic in that their expectations, they understand the fact that healthcare is a process and it takes time, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, they, there needs to be a bit of a working together, right? So with manual therapy, particularly if our aim is to just reduce some of that acuteness of how someone feels, right, that kind of buys us time to understand, number one, their case and their condition, maybe what we're going to work on, rather than trying to uh, have to, I guess, develop the full plan and deliver it all on the spot in that one session, right? It gives you time to be able to go away uh, and maybe think about it a little bit more, maybe establish uh, a little bit more of the plan rather than having to deliver it all on the, on the spot. So I think that's 
uh, that's super important. Uh, the other thing is obviously, yeah, then that trust aspect. And I think then, once again, talking to um, a lot of clinicians here at the moment, I think this is where then for a lot of us, right, I mean, we, we've all seen with a lot of the new graduates that kind of come out these days, uh, potentially like some difficulties in trying to establish maybe some of those therapeutic alliances. And maybe some of that stems from the fact that maybe a lot of the teaching, a lot of the kind of modern thinking at the moment is kind of shying away from manual therapy and, and the importance of it. So rather than starting at the start where, you know, people often present to us with pain, dysfunction, uh, you know, whatever issues, you know, being very limited in what they can do. And then obviously we want to take them all the way to being able to perform well, move well, have the strength and capacity to be able to do everything that they want to be able to do, right? Often I think for a lot of the new graduates coming out, their focus now is so exercise based and so activity based, you know, it's kind of almost been conditioned into them now that this is where, uh, you know, healthcare is, you know, this is evidence based, this is all that we can do. They're starting here in the middle, right? At Okay, we're going to just deliver exercises, we're only going to, uh, you know, do active based interventions where we're not going to do any treatment because the evidence doesn't say that that works at all. So uh, what we're actually missing out on is we're missing out on this really important part at the start of the treatment and the therapeutic alliance process where, uh, you know, that's, that's what sets you up for success. Maybe they're jumping too far ahead to here which doesn't align with what that patient or what that client wants. So uh, potentially they're feeling like they're not being understood. Uh, you know, they're just being given a bunch of exercises, which is usually if there is a negative response, that's the, that's the complaint. They kind of feel like they've just, they haven't been listened to. Uh, they've just been given a whole bunch of exercises and then away they go uh, and left not to actually feel better, you know, potentially feeling worse, that type of thing before things might get better down the line. So they're my thoughts on manual therapy, you guys. I want to know what you guys are thinking as well. So if you want, comment below, tick on this poll that I've set up here uh, as well and let me know if you've got any other thoughts on it as well. Because I certainly think that manual therapy has been getting a bit of a bad rap, you know, particularly over uh, the last couple of years and certainly, you know, has a really, really important part in what we do. Um, it's certainly, you know, an issue if that's all we do, if, uh, if all we focus on is manual therapy and we're not progressing people down that line of, you know, dysfunction to performance as we teach in our MAT courses, then that, that's a big issue. But we all have to start somewhere. And I think manual therapy provides a really important starting point to set us up for success uh, going forward. All right. So I hope you're all having a, a great week. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll touch base again very soon.